yeah, what we do with um, across Man United, so with a lot of people, we do everything what's in our power right, to get uh, the right man in. What's the secret now to get the right man in? Um, yeah, transfer marks, you, you never know, but we know our targets eh, and we do everything we can, as I said. So every effort we put in <coughs> eh, to, get, uh, to get this done because, yeah, um, it's an area where we need improvement. In the summer. And um, when you communicated that to Harry and then Harry put that statement out, were you aware that Harry was going to put that statement out and, and how did he take the news that you that uh, you were not making him captain anymore? I, I think, uh, and everyone will not, uh, can understand that, that is for a player a disappointment, uh, but it can also work, for, uh, work out very good for the team and for Harry. So um, Harry is an important player, stays an important player. Uh, we have four centre-backs. We need four centre-backs minimum, uh, maybe even even one extra. Uh, we have seen last season when you play so many games. And so we are really pleased to have Harry in our, in our squad. Neil. Um, Eric, if, if you don't get players out, it's going to be difficult to have the funds to get that striker in that you need, isn't it? I mean, that must be key for you. And it's you know the clock's ticking down. Yeah, you have to talk. You you, you make the question to the wrong person. Uh, uh, finance is not uh, not for me. I know I'm aware how about finance and about FFP rules, etc. But um, we do, as I said, we across United, we do everything to get um, at the target in. Andy. Hello, Eric. Hello. Just on Bruno becoming manager, w w w why did you <laughs> <laughs> taking okay, your job? I, I, I've been replaced. <laughs> Just thinking two years ahead. Here. <laughs> on Bruno becoming two captain. Years. <laughs> All right, I'll give you three. Uh, what was your thought process? Was it um, was there anybody else in in contention? Uh, what was your, your logic in in Bruno? Oh, I think. Uh, Across our squad, uh, we have we have more leaders. So, so for me, it's always you need uh, a team, a squad. You need leaders. You need team players. You need uh, specialists. You need multifunctional players, and you need individualists. So, and all those areas uh, you have to cover in your squad. And yeah, I'm happy we have more than one leader. And so Bruno will wear the band, but um, he will get support from others. Chris, just at the front here of the microphone, please. Hi, Eric. When we first spoke to you last year, when you first came into the club, you were very careful to say top four was the target for you. You, you hit that target last season. Is that still your target now, or do you can, given what you've achieved so far, can you aim higher next season? Do you think? We have to raise the bar. But um, you can first, uh, by raising the bar, it's, uh, you can not always express that in the, in the clinical result. Uh, uh, but of course, we want to win every game, and that stays. And we have showed um, in last season how we can beat all the teams in the world. And now we have to do that on a consistently base. So that is uh, absolutely one of our objectives, uh, be more consistent and then we will see where we end. But given what you have and given what you've built, and given the two players that you've signed so far and hopefully more players to come, do you think Manchester United can challenge for the title next season? Uh, I already <laughs> give you an answer um, in the previous question. So I said we want to be more consistent and so we want to play in a higher level. Uh, we want to raise the bar, uh, lift up the demands and yeah, then we will see where we end. And yeah, the competition, we know all, is, is very strong. But we can beat uh, any club in the world, we have showed. Rob. <coughs> uh, hi, Eric. I'm just on your decision to let David leave and, and bring in Andre Onana, was there a point at which last season you looked at the goalkeeping situation and thought, I can't continue with, with David and we need to change goalkeeper in the summer? 
uh, I think David has a huge contribution on our level of performance last year yeah. and our result. Um, <laughs> I want to mention uh, all the clean sheets uh, he made, but uh, also uh, there's also always a team performance uh, because we defend with 11, not with only the goalkeeper. But it was absolutely uh, obvious that David uh, plays a big uh, role, had a, a huge comp uh, contribution in that. But yeah, uh, there is coming a time for every player uh, to uh, that the club has made, is going to make changes, and uh, this was the right moment in our perspective. Was there any regret at all that after 12 years that David didn't get his kind of big farewell possibly at Old Trafford with you know, a lap of honour and stuff and it was kind of done a bit quieter sort of after the season had finished? Yeah, but he will get that big contribution. He deserved it. Uh, if it's up to me, uh, then David, after 545 uh, uh, games, after uh, all his contribution, after all his performance, after such a long period, it's massive hey, what he did here. So he's for the rest of his life a legend uh, for Manchester United. So we have to uh, say farewell against him and with all the fans um, yeah, in Old Trafford, absolutely. Melissa. Eric, you've spoken before of Manchester United needing to be more aggressive in their play and also having greater protection. How does Mason Mount and Andre and Anna help you guys achieve that? I think uh, first they are uh, great football players, uh, of course, <laughs> that's, uh, 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 that's key, but also they are great personalities, uh, they know exactly what they want, they have uh, both the winning attitude and they can't lose, so they will uh, give their 100% effort uh, to get that done and both are also really in the team. Uh, let's take some from US media, one there and then one here. Thank you. My name is Derek Owusu, representing Kizito Sports Africa. Uh, coach, you made mention of an era coming to an end last season and City won't trouble. Do you still stand by that an era coming to an end? And may I know the deputies for Bruno Fernandes? Who are the deputies to Bruno Fernandes? Thank you. I don't well, understand really the question. The, the okay. Deputies to deputy to deputy Bruno Fernandez. Is there a vice captain? Oh, if there is a deputy, uh, oh, we will see, and uh, I already expressed, there are more uh, leaders in, in the squad. And, and yeah, we go in a natural way, uh, and then we will decide. Uh, but as I said, Bruno um, will not do it on his own. Uh, we have strong characters in our team with strong opinions. They will support him, but also yeah, express, and we will see who will take the draw. And as I asked earlier on, last season you made mention of an era coming to an end, talking about the dominance of City and you know, uh, other clubs. Do you still stand by that era is coming to an end? Is it this season or we should wait for another more season? Um, I, so I didn't say in particular so uh, City, I said it across, uh, was Liverpool, was City. And yeah, we have seen what can happen uh, last season, uh, both sides. Uh, one was really top, or there was less, but uh, I spoke over a certain period of years. Yeah, and that's always, eras will always come to an end. Okay, lastly, I'm sorry. Uh, Onana is from Cameroon, and I'm from Ghana, so we are all neighbors. Africa is really proud of Andrew Onana. What quality exactly is he going to bring on board? to your team? Yeah, it's a great personality, but uh, first of all, uh, he is a good goalkeeper, and so he has to make sure that he uh, uh, keep, his, keep his goal clean uh, in togetherness uh, with the whole team, uh, because a big part of a keeper is organizing.